All right. Good afternoon, everyone. We are starting sharp at four. I love it. Uh, welcome to Switching Hats, uh, an event organized by Adobe and Agile DX, powered by Times Internet. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Uh, my name is Sapan Verma. I'm a stand-up comedian. In case you're wondering what I am doing here, Adobe has promised me they're going to give me all the free softwares for lifetime. I will make memes using Photoshop after that. <laughs> but today's uh, panel, as you as you guys know. It's called Switching Hats, and we're going to talk about uh, identifying and agreeing on values while making a buying decision. I'm sure this happens in every corporate. It also happens in every group, friends group, in families also, right? Um, I'll give an example. Me and my family, we've been trying to um, decide what car to buy for the last two years. So everybody in the family is of a different opinion. Since I'm going to drive the car, I'm looking at what are the features, what kind of engine, because I'm really excited about that. Uh, my father is being a typical father. He's looking at mileage, kitna degi gadi, or kitni ki padegi, or servicing kaisi hoti. Typical father. And my mother is looking at the back seat comfort and the safety. And since three of us can't come to any conclusion, we are still traveling in Ola Auto because that's how middle class my family is. But today is not about me. Today we've got a wonderful panel uh, of different <laughs> levels of C level executives from uh, different parts of the country representing different industries. Uh, who will help me uh, talk about this. And while I call them on stage, as I said that we're talking about switching hats and agreeing on values, I'm also going to ask one common question to break the ice to each panelist, which is that, what is the one thing that you own and value that maybe others in your family don't? For example, for me, uh, that would be my PlayStation gaming console. I think it's amazing. I think it's really helping me, you know, pass time in this pandemic. But my parents, my wife, everybody thinks it's a waste of time. So that's going to be the opening question. Let me introduce your participants. Uh, firstly, we have Mr. Pradeep Vivedi, who is the Group CEO and Executive Director, Eros International Media Limited, Eros STX India. Pradeep, sir, uh, if you can unmute yourself. Hello, how are you? Hey, I'm doing something fine. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So firstly, I heard that from the last time we did this panel, you were the last panel also, you have already been promoted. <laughs> so well, many congratulations. Okay. Thank you so much and for that. We will not take credit for, the, for that, but uh, you know, you never know. <laughs> you know, the credit is always with the <laughs> well-wishers, so the credit is entirely to you. Amazing. Thank you for joining us again, sir. Just as I said, uh, what is one thing that you own and value that people around you don't value as much? Do you have something like that? You know, I stay in Mumbai where every square feet counts. So even if you keep a brick <laughs> in the house, your wife will tell you that it costs, you know, X thousands of rupees to us for us <laughs> to keep that brick there. And what I value most is uh, over uh, 25 plus years of working, I have accumulated this collection of books that I believe is amazing. But today's oh, wow. generation believes is perhaps not uh, really needed because everything comes in a Kindle and you don't need physical space. So everybody cribs about just the sheer volume of books that I have, right. which I love and uh, others <laughs> perhaps don't as much. <laughs> today's generation does not even read, sir. It's all about memes and Instagram. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm it. learning it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I will introduce our next participant. We have Mr. Samit Goha, who's Chief Financial and Technical Officer, MMTC PAMP India. Hello, Samit, sir. Hi. Hi, Saban. How are you? Hi. Thanks I'm for good. having me. Thank you for joining me, sir. What is something that you own and value that others are not valuing around you? So, you know, uh, I'll go a little on the intangible side compared to what Pradeep said. You know, I think now, you know, at this stage, uh, I, I think I value the fact that I'm reasonably disciplined and organized. Right. My family, nobody values, you know, especially my children. <laughs> and when I so this is... think about this, you know, Sapan, I think it was the same with me and my father. You know, my father of course. Said, you know, <laughs> he was very disciplined and organized. And yeah, I yeah. You only reach a certain age and realize that. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Samit sir gave a very Miss India kind of answer, huh? very intangible, like <laughs> very proper, proper answer. Uh, our next panelist, we have Mr. Amit Tiwari, Chief Marketing Officer, Havels. Uh, thank you for joining, Amit sir. Hi, Sabin. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us. Please tell us something that you own and value that people do. I think I was about to say something, but Pradeep has already stolen that particular thing because books are something and that is books. I can't something take without books because the the smell of the books makes me literally, uh, but I think I'll tell you uh, most things and most of the family my doesn't value is my fitness regime, which I follow, oh. it, whatever it is. And they say it's completely waste of time. I don't know what are you trying to do. And okay. irrespective, whatever the day where I'm traveling, I try to maintain that entire regime. That, that's how so you have made all of us conscious on this panel already <laughs> with your fitness regime. We're not going to tilt our cameras down at all. 
and show our bellies uh, and we of course have uh, mr nitin singhal who's the md digital experience adobe india uh, nitin sir thank you for joining us hi sabun thank you for joining us what is something that you own and value come on tell us well I, you know frankly uh, it wouldn't be that obvious but uh, i'm a techno geek so i like to bring all <laughs> kinds of gadgets at home a whole Friendly. lot of automation that i do uh, my family hates it because it makes it complex for them so you know it's like uh, opening doors and having telephone exchanges and software all around the place and you know i love to see uh, you know televisions with technology uh, right. frankly uh, to the extent that uh, you know you talked about your playstation uh, yeah. i have a i have a 15 year old son who's all about xbox and yeah. uh, when he doesn't come uh, come to the dinner table on time i can actually switch off his xbox sitting at the dinner table so my family oh my definitely God. hates me <laughs> <laughs> that is that is some brutal lessons for kids we learning from you um thank you so much for joining us sir and of course uh, we have my co-host the robin to my batman we have ankur mittal the ceo and co-founder of rgld x consulting who will kind of be running actually he is the batman he owns all the cool tech i am just here on laptop <laughs> ankur welcome to the show thank you so much sapan um, ankur what do you want to tell us something So uh, I'm actually right now between uh, you know moving homes and I have a big collection of cassettes. Uh, I don't have my player anymore, and my wife actually wanted me to get rid of that. But okay. uh, those are the cassettes I you know kind of uh, grown up with. I still have those Dalit Mehndi uh, first album, so uh, can't can't. Oh my God! Get rid of them. Yeah, you, you have increased the mental age of this panel suddenly by ten years <laughs> <laughs> by mentioning cassettes, not even CDs. You've gone to the nineties yeah. with cassettes. <laughs> lovely so ankur uh, you will also be uh, helping us conduct some audience poll and for the audience is watching it uh, please ankur will tell you how we are going to do it but there are some prizes for the good answers and the wise answers that you gave us ankur you want to tell the audience quickly how you want to do it sure since our topic was switch in hats i thought let me switch my hat and also bring in the audience opinion into the conversation typically we talk as panelists but uh, i wanted to kind of bring the voice of audience so i'm kind right. of switching the hat today and i am going to be talking from the audience perspective uh, we have right. a platform called menti i have just posted the link on the zoom chat uh, so our audience should be able to access it as soon as right. they click on it they will see four questions uh, back to back and they can answer it right away and i will basically you know bring those questions from time to time into our panel discussion and uh, bring in our audience flavor as well Awesome. So, audience members, you can see it on the Zoom chat. The link is there. Uh, please click on it. Please feel free to answer the uh, whatever you feel like. And uh, as we said, we have some prizes that we will reach out to you after the panel, and uh, we will do the neat poll. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I think uh, to start off with, as we are talking about switching hats and identifying and agreeing on values, the first and the most basic question, which I am opening to the panel with, uh, is that how do you know whether your customer experience even needs improvement? How do you measure and how do you find out um we can start with anybody who wants to start i was about to offer up amit to give that <laughs> explanation but uh, let let me put it this way see the uh, we, we are discussing values and what's important to businesses these days and you know in the current context of this rapidly evolving uh, uh, paradigms on leveraging of technology the confluence yeah. of entertainment and information sort of coming together and being consumed almost on an on the go basis all the time i mean just yeah. the sheer information overload that our sensory receptors are receiving has made it a challenge for anybody to have meaningful engagements with audiences with people i mean i'm i'm in the yeah. entertainment business we run a film studio and we run a streaming service so we believe i mean uh, not believe i mean we actually have declared as of end of last quarter over 220 million subscribers that you know consume our content but the fact is that if i look at the 220 million that i have am i able to relate to each one of them so the whole concept today in terms of what businesses are striving to do while they have larger masses of consumers and customers to deal with is how do i deal with that segment of one if sapan verma uh -huh. is consuming my content how do i keep him hooked on make him not right. only like my content consume my product consume yeah. it on a sustainable basis and most yeah. importantly pay me for it and right. feel good at the end of it right <laughs> yeah so that's the holy yeah. grail that we are all aspiring towards i'll take a pause here but i guess the dilemma is not very different for anybody yeah. irrespective of the kind of business that you're running 
Fair. Sir, if you want to impress Sapan Varma, it's very simple. You hire him to make content for you and pay him. <laughs> I think that is a short... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Last time also we owed the conversation. I think we need to do that this time. This panel is just me requesting everybody to give me work. Basically, and, and, no, Sapan, uh, and Sapan, we could help you with a lot of technology to make it look good. Uh, of course, of course. That's why. I'm here. Uh, Amit sir, do you want to tell us how do you understand if your customer experience even needs improvement? Yeah, I think just to build in Sapan what Pradeep said, he rightly uh, stitched the uh, cord very nicely in terms of building it. If you see today, satisfaction is a passing. Whether you are in product, yeah. services, anything, and delight is something that is a new currency that we need to look for. If today my wow. customer says that today this is I'm very satisfied, I think I have not done my job today. If he says, but I'm delighted for what the service that you actually provide, what interaction that you actually provide, what interactions plus in engagement that you have provide, I think that is right. what you need to build. And what happens once you reach to a delighted state? Then it is very difficult to maintain and actually try to have the delight every time. Once that delight right. goes down, then it becomes extremely difficult to retain that. Same. What happens is just a comparison. The last yeah. time interaction of the same brand is not better than what it has today, or last time yeah. is better than you actually having today. That's what I always saying, and that's what I've been making in my, most of my uh, discussion is: don't try to actually make the brand; just try to make the customer. If your customer and consumers are happy, they will make your brand automatically. So Lovely. I think it's a continuous, continuous exercise, and that's how you need to build across that. There will be never be a end. There will never be an end to the road. That how would be a delight measures and all. I think there will be a lot of matrices and KPIs, and that's that's not the point. The bigger point yeah. is you have to continuously work. Right. Get that particular delight and keep that particular delight where it is. That's that. That's how actually I see from my particular experience. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Samit sir, any insight over here from your end? So uh, you know, uh, while Amit and Pradeep are the experts on this, I think my uh, quick key takeaway and continuing from what Amit said is, you know, I think at one point of time we used to say brand is the lead indicator, and if your brand is are good, the you know the product or the service is extremely good. And I think as Amit rightly said, today brand is really the lag indicator, and uh, one of the uh, one of the significant factors which impacts brands is how your customer experience and how you're really delighting your customers, and yeah. uh, you know. the the there are various ways of measuring you know how your brand is doing in terms of itps etc uh, so a, 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 an indicator could be really of how you are servicing your customer could be you know how your brand is at the end faring that i think right. is an indirect lag kind of an, uh, kind of an indicator in terms of you know direct indicators you know you get you you today have social uh, feeds you have you know you know the kind of response you are getting on blogs and Social yeah. networks to understand, you know, how your customers are actually talking about you, your product, your service, your brand, and yeah. uh, uh, you know there are indirect indicators of what kind of premium you are able to get over your over your competitor product. So I think these indicators, in a way, uh, speak about how customer is actually uh, experiencing you, whether he is satisfied, whether he is delighted, or whether he is really he doesn't bother about you. Okay, understood. Uh, Nitin sir, any insight from your end since you are looking at from the other side? <laughs> No, absolutely. Uh, well, I, I'm also selling, right? So I definitely of look course. at customer experience <laughs> as a very key indicator. Right <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, you know, yeah. one thing I, I must say that um, uh, there's a golden rule that I follow, right? Uh, which is basically don't uh, expect what you don't inspect, and it's it's a very clear uh, view on anything that you do, right? Um, so when I look at customer experience, so how do you really measure what's going on with your yeah. customers? What what KPIs. What is the way that you're able to gather information? And as uh, Amit put it, uh, you know that it's uh, not about a uh, transaction. A lot of uh, you know customers that I see think of uh, loyalty as a transaction. Loyalty is not a transaction. Right. It's a journey. And we have seen yeah. brands uh, in the market. For example, you know, imagine Fitbit out of nowhere, right? But what did they do? They rewarded your journey. They created a com- you know compete between among you know your uh, uh, you know friends and. amongst yeah. the community and suddenly it became a brand that uh, people uh, you know uh, forced to reckon with in in this uh, yeah. smart watches right so there are yeah. so many examples i think it's very important to you know not have blind sight so sometimes yeah. you have this legacy that i'm this brand frankly yeah. look at the tech sector how it's changed right you have companies which are valued billions of dollars out of nowhere so so that's what i would actually put Amazing, very, very, very different insight from everybody else because you're representing your side also. I wanted to ask you guys since you guys are all from different industries, if you can give some real life examples, maybe from your industry about 
what are the differences between different c level executives when they making this decision of you know customer service investment because i'm sure everybody looks at it from different hats and different thinking hats so what are the different ways people look at it from your industry if you have some examples that would be really helpful samit sir would you like to tell us something yeah so you know uh, while i can i can i'm just thinking of uh, you know experiences across my earlier companies you know like airtel or the obroys but i think i will stick to what we are trying to do in mmtc pam and in mmtc yeah. pam you know most of us a lot of people wouldn't know us because we are primarily a b2b precious metals player so we actually uh, you know sell gold and silver in tons but to the b2b sector but uh, yeah. we are now trying to get into uh, the consumer side of the business and we are trying to look at how we can really engage uh consumers to directly buying gold from us in the terms of pendants or coins etc we can't sell jewelry because we are not jewelers mm -hmm. and um, interestingly we are at that stage where we are uh, you know evaluating how to really uh, get into this uh, you know so called digital transformation and i think thankfully what all the cxos uh, agree now and i think people are reasonably what to that is it has to be with the consumer at the center i think that the 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 it head the, the cto the cfo the cso the cmo of course the ceo everybody realizes that it has to be with the consumer at the center so right. there is no disconnect about that and okay. i think uh, you know uh, and i i think there is great value which for example of course the cfo if i if i wear my cfo hat and at the end eventually after a three year period i would like to see you know if there is an investment which i have made what is the return on the investment what is the kind of break even period which are very cliche standard you know financial matrices which are uh, you know yeah. about two years old uh, but i think uh, uh, you know for example similarly i think it is a great opportunity for the uh, cio or the cto to really revamp the entire uh, tech landscape because while the digital transformation really sits at the forefront in terms of you know consumer experience interacting with the customer but i think it is a great opportunity and a great value which the cto sees in terms of you know really cleaning up the entire tech space whether it is the middle stack whether it is the erp how you know different systems integrate talk to each other so yeah. i think that's how the i think the cto cio sees value the cfo ultimately sees okay. Uh, you know, value in terms of the financial matrices. Actually, uh, you know, for the and and I think the key stakeholder here really is the is the CMO or the CSO or the or the person who's really driving revenue in the organization. Uh, right. Because for them, uh, really, it is about understanding how much more of the so-called digital revenue will we be able to get in our organization. Yeah. Because yeah. Frankly, they, yeah. uh, you know, our, our digital revenue would be in the nature in in single digits. so they will see value in understanding for example there's a large customer who's consuming products and services digitally how can we right. get that piece of the pie so right. you know right. different cxos but the, the good thing is i see all of them talk about customer consumer got it i mean so any insight from your side from your industry papa i think just uh, building on samit said just a little different perspective and he he rightly said in terms of that how does uh, cio and see everybody talks about customer because customer is the new currency talk but what happens yeah. is specifically in and somebody uh, in let's say uh, after independence somebody came and gave a very good uh, idea that everything should be measured in roi so whether an roi sits for a consumer delight or a consumer experience for a marketing person for me it is very uncomfortable for me to even have the discussion of roi because it may okay. it may be a return on investment for a finance guy but for me yeah. it is return on insights and return on innovation that i think but how do i actually calculate the return on insights and return on innovation in the entire prospect is that that for me it is not about roi for me it is consumer delight experience can i actually do a consumer delight experience index can i do a consumer engagement index for me because it may not be giving a direct moola today it will not be giving a direct matrix today but end of the day this is helping me to get get that particular foundation built today that right. foundation will help for a brand for, for a brand what will be an roi you can't say in terms of this is my tangible value brand today tomorrow i have done this uh, marketing and has gone to this level and that is what, even from i think from a cfo perspective or there has to be a separate matrix for different functions and micro function that you need to one size will not fit for all because that doesn't serve the purpose uh, that actually you are actually trying to attempt understood understood pradeep sir anything from your side on this yeah i think uh, i think both uh, samit and amit uh, brought out uh, very relevant points i think in terms of being sensitive to what the customer wants and the customer you know uh, see the funny thing is all of us every single executive that works in a corporate sector or in an organization believes that he is the uh, bearer of responsibility for the customer the finance guy says i have to you know sort of 
optimize the cost so that I can give it at the lowest possible price point. The customer service guy says, I'm serving the customer, so I'm taking care of all of his technical, non-technical product related yeah. problems. The product designers. Everybody, everybody has, designing. yeah, everybody. Takes everybody time. has their view. And it is actually true because yeah. it's a combination of all of them coming together. So, you know, from my current uh, vantage point, when I look at it, I look at it myself as a bit of a, uh, Zubin Mehta. I don't know how many of you are for fans of Zubin Mehta. You know the New York Philharmonic Orchestra uh, player? So, yeah. you know, like a CFO, a CIO, a CTO, a chief product officer, and the entire team, everybody's got their specialization. Somebody's got drums, somebody's got percussion, somebody's got guitar, somebody's yeah. got saxophone. But yeah. until all of that sort of works together in harmony, you don't get great music, yeah. right? Right and, the, right. and the audience that has come here has come for the music. It has not come wow. for your expertise in playing drums or your expertise in, you know, uh, playing the guitar well. So I think it's the harmony that you create in an organization by making right. sure that, to borrow again from Samit's word, how do you keep the customer at the center of it to make sure that right. all of your actions are ultimately resulting in tangible experiences being felt by the consumer or the customer. You know, Got it could it. be a B2B offering, it could be a B2C offering. The fundamental yeah. realities of marketing and consumer interface does not change. Yeah. What becomes extremely important is that it is nice to say that, you know, you need to do everything for the customer and all of us would like to do. But the theory of constraints is a very big factor that weighs in everybody's mind. Marketing has only so many dollars that it can spend on promoting the product. Product design teams have only so much time period, even if they have unlimited supply of money. I mean, it, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, you, you can't have, uh, uh, you know, uh, nine ladies, if I may say so, pregnant for a month and produce a child, right? There is a certain time period for product creation of a new product that takes right. its own time. So yeah. everybody needs to be given the latitude or the bandwidth to be able to do what they do best you can mitigate their constraints to the maximum extent possible. So it becomes extremely important for the organization and for the leaders of an organization to be able to identify those constraints and remove those roadblocks so that teams can do their job the best. Now, right. you've given very interesting insights. <laughs> and these are <laughs> internal the... factors. If I can just take yeah. one more minute and talk about externalities, right? February, 2020, all of us were sitting pretty most of us were creating what were known in our organizations as annual operating plans, long range plans, you know, making presentations. Here is our vision 2030 and looking at it, we are entering 2020. And also at the same time saying, oh, vision 2010 document, let's take out and figure out, are we anywhere near our vision 2020? Yeah. And then comes a pandemic that completely changes all of the equations. So the, so the bearing of externality in the decision-making yeah. process for consumer experiences is also yeah. extremely significant. And I think we need to be agile, Understood. we need to be nimble to be able to yeah. take that factor and make changes yeah. as we go along. The, the span of horizon of planning and execution is not a quarter. It's not a month, it's not a week. Sometimes it is days and hours. Like and yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's what we need to wake up to. Yeah, I think uh, comparing a CEO to a, a Zubin Mehta, you made CEO sound very cool with that. I'm, I'm <laughs> most excited about that. Nitin, sir, what would you call yourself if not Zubin Mehta in this case? <laughs> well, uh, you know, interesting point, and I completely agree. I think uh, um, pandemic did change uh, working together. Yeah. So I think the CIO, CEO, uh, CXOs of the organization, in fact, even the CFO, they needed to come together and really see what's the change that they need to bring in the organization. Uh, yeah. Competitive differentiation, no longer it was the challenge of the CIO or, you know, the CMO or really the person who needs to actually go, you know, do sales. Uh, I think uh, one important aspect that uh, was brought out, organizations that have been successful, you have a Zubin Mehta inside the organization. And sometimes, you know, as uh, providers of technology, working with so many customers, we need to perform the part of Zubin Mehta. Sometimes it yeah. works, sometimes yeah. it doesn't work. And, and uh, I would say that um, it gives a good insight that Maybe, uh, you know, organizations that are on, a, you know, on our uh, other side, which is the audience, they need to actually yeah. find their Zubin Mehta, you know, uh, in their organization and make it work. Right. Understood. Thank you so much. Before we move on to the next question, I would just like to bring Ankur in uh, with uh, some audience poll inside that we've got, we've got so far. Oh, thanks, Sapan. Uh, we have got some very interesting, uh, you know, poll from the audience. I, I hope my screen is visible and we'll yeah. share so yeah. uh, though our audience kind of feels same, but I got very interesting inputs uh, and I definitely empathize with the gentleman who uh, answered wife. 
I definitely look at my life <laughs> and have to make big investment. Uh, but one thing that came was uh, crypto and safety. And in fact, I would like to wow. uh, really quickly take a input from Nitin because he's dealing with so many customers. Uh, how much do you uh, feel, uh, Nitin? People kind of weigh in uh, safety and security of data, customer data, dependability when they are kind of you know bringing in thoughts about the CX investment and they are you know kind of thinking about uh, the digital transformation. Sure. So I, I think, uh, Ankur, uh, you know, it's sa safety and security first. Uh, at, a at a broader level, pandemic has taught us that uh, safety and security is a very critical part of our lives. And uh, the the plethora of, uh, you know, news that we have heard about customer data, data being misutilized, all the things that have happened. I think um, uh, from an Adobe perspective, we have security as part of our basic DNA, right? Uh, you know, when you look at um, the way that uh, technology is transitioning, uh, the whole aspect of uh, cookie-less and first-party data becoming more and more relevant in the, you know, in the world, um, it is a very critical part of uh, uh, anything that we do with our customers. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll probably chime in a little later, Sapan, with our audience. Yeah. I think, I think, Ankur, you've got the winner for this one. The guy who answered wife <laughs> is the... Universal winner for every poll. He's the, he's the most honest guy I can definitely yeah. say. <laughs> That's because he is not seen on camera. Yeah. So he can be honest. Uh, my next question to uh, Pradeep. So Pradeep, you're the CEO. Uh, you know, as a CEO's perspective, you know, we heard, we heard so many like CEOs, the captain of the ship. Uh, but realistically, you know, you have also so many fragile egos in every company, right? Every C-level executive has different ideas and mindsets while making these buying decisions. So are there some common points where everybody comes together? As a CEO, what do you see? See, first of all, I mean, you know, this whole captain of the ship thing is right. I mean, there are times when you perhaps need to take decisions that, uh, you know, are tough or something that requires a resolution of differences of opinion and arriving at a common thread so that everybody can work together. But typically, you know, you ask any CEO, they are all chief everything officer. You know, they end up doing <laughs> almost almost little bit of everything. and right. and And that translates into their levels of empathy and levels of understanding of various functional imperatives. I think Understood. what tends to happen and what is extremely, you know, in my experience, uh, fruitful and uh, enabling for me has been, if there is clarity of communication and clarity of expectations, I think once you're clear on what you want to do and you have told your team or your CXOs what your constraints are, I think you find that they are able to come up with solutions which are far better than what one person or any given CEO may be able to think through of, right? And so the bottom part. line is that, you know, and it's an old adage or an old cliche, but teamwork and the entire team understanding what the imperative is, how we need to get out together yeah. and solve for the customer is what will drive the agenda. Now, uh, easier said than done. There are scenarios where there are certain people who are very strong headed or have very strong ideas, opinionated, may want to run away with an agenda in a particular way. Uh, I think what yeah. I've realized effective, this is very effective is that sometimes you need to give people a little bit of independence to go out and do their own thing, you know, create a Got test it. group and a control group. If they want to experiment with something on a CX matter, you know, they want to experiment with a new social media campaign, a new tool, a new methodology, let them try, let them uh, a new visual mnemonic, let them try it out. Because ultimately, Understood. you know, uh, nobody likes to be told that they are wrong. But yeah. if you go out and do your own experiment, whether you are right or wrong, the market will tell you. And, you know, sometimes yeah. that mirror of the market is actually a very yeah. great example. And, and, and like, you know, Nitin pointed out, I mean, uh, you know, uh, as consultants, as advisors to companies that are leading large-scale data or digital transformation, they try yeah. to act like Zubin Mehta. There are certain followers, certain acolytes who, who love what they're doing and want to learn a lot more so that they can, you know, improve. And then there are certain people who say, look, boss, this is A, not invented here, so I don't know what, what you're trying to sell here. Number two, they think that they know better than the person who's teaching them. I mean, I think yeah. the, the aspect of being a student and having that humility is extremely important for all professionals, notwithstanding their designation. Perfect. Yeah. And I think if we can keep that spirit alive, I think we'll all be successful. Yeah. Wow. I think CEO, CEO's job is tough in that sense. You have to manage expectations from everyone and get everybody together. Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, it's true for everybody. You know, I mean, you ask head of marketing, a head of sales, head of yeah. technology, yeah. everybody is leading. And even they are leaders at the end of the day because they are managing yeah, yeah. 100%. which has yeah. that uh, capability. So, you know, yeah, yeah. the point essentially is that what you're trying to do is if you're 
objective is to build superior customer experiences that customer experiences is a manifestation of your product design your product delivery yeah. your product pricing and your yeah. post product purchase dissonance you know uh, yeah. when a consumer is actually experiencing your product whether or not he or she is happy about it and that is yeah. where your real value comes in and your team's ability to you know sort of uh made you know that's where as i say as a rubber hits the road that is where your yeah. real test happens and if you're successful yeah. there then all of your effort is you know well worth it makes sense samit so you play a very interesting role because you you are like playing two hats in one which is great for us also we got like two panelists for the price of one you are a C- cfo <laughs> and a technical officer cto also so firstly i want to know how do you differentiate between do, these two hats and your daily working and secondly you know uh, as a cfo and cto when it comes to your customer experience how do you define your goals for the organization and since you are the cfo uh, how do you find out that you know this investment is full paisa vasool for me in very clear terms uh, okay so there were three questions <laughs> three questions first is the two different hats how do you right. how do you do that so look i think uh, uh, you know they are uh, at the end uh, there is a lot of convergence between these two roles and i have discovered it because you know i did this earlier and this is the second stint when i'm doing both the uh, i'm wearing the finance and the it hat uh, yeah. uh, but i i would say you know 80% of the jobs are very different i mean uh, you know typically the only two places where typically a, a cfo and a and a cto's role would converge is you know eventually the cto comes back to the cfo for an approval for a you know it capex or an investment so here it's like uh, because i am an active part in actually the proposal so you know it helps in the approval for sure so that is you know, <laughs> that in a uh, you, you apply know, and you approve yeah <laughs> uh, i mean i mean in a way you have to wear the two hats <laughs> then get back to you know like amit said you know boring questions or roa etc yeah, yeah. Uh, but i think it helps in a way because i think uh, you know what i fundamentally believe uh, sapan is uh, you know uh, increasingly now and even more so in the future i think yeah. a lot of the fortunes of any company whether you are in the b2b space or in the b2c space and when i say fortunes eventually every company is in the business of business so you are there to yeah yeah of course i think a lot of it depends upon how uh, how you are handling technology because i also yeah. firmly believe that that 90% of all solutions which corporates today face can be solved through technology if that is the reality and if you understood that then as the cfo you also understand that you need to support you know technology investment technology change technology transformation in yeah. uh, you know every sphere and uh, uh, you know so so in a way when i play both these roles together it helps me to understand that this is the reality and when i'm looking yeah. and i think the cfo had i also realized that without this a lot of uh, you know a lot of what the company uh, you know wants to be or where it wants to go is not going yeah. to be achieved. and yeah. uh, then when you put on the cto hat i think today there is so much of transformation happening across the entire tech space uh, i think uh, you know uh, there is just too much to choose from and there is too much to do i think you are only uh, constrained by the time by the priorities and by the kind of yeah. cash you are able to spend so it's it's a good mix and you can switch between the two roles uh, to that extent quite well i'm sure nitin sir really very happy when you said that 90% of your problems can be tackled with technology nitin sir am i right in this Oh, absolutely i think this is uh, you know this is the age of technology i think you're seeing yeah. that uh, in all businesses yeah so you are you, do you agree 90% or do you want to take it to 100% given that you are <laughs> <laughs> and there is always a, there is also there is always a human touch otherwise absolutely, uh, <laughs> absolutely. i mean sir your, your industry is slightly different you know because um, for a company like yours you sell to customers you know once in a while slightly infrequently right so do you need to invest so much in like customer loyalty and customer experience one and to how do you quantify that because a customer like as opposed to say pradeep's uh, business where it also people are coming back to their platform or something how do you quantify that so uh, so i think there are two different parts to the same uh, question so first in terms yeah. of and i have read long time back that anybody who comes to your particular as an interaction to your whether he buys it doesn't buy it is just like coming to your particular party and you have thrown a party and someone you are the host of that party You have to be a good host. And you, if you're a host, you have to be a host. Whether he buys, doesn't buy, doesn't matter. End of the day. But yeah. he has attracted because that he has shown some interest in your particular product. So it doesn't yeah. matter. But it doesn't matter that you really need to invest in something which is only for once or twice because customer is a customer. You just can't yeah. in terms of building the actually. 
And one thing which I will pick up from what Pradeep was saying, just just putting into this perspective, and I firmly believe that there is no B two B or B two C. There is always P two P because end of the day you have this people to people interaction that you are trying to do. So irrespective yeah. of whether you come for one particular deal, even for as smallest as one particular product that need to be, that that becomes a very very important part of it. And today what happens is losing a customer becomes much more detractor because he will actually spoil five other people with your. Yeah. Product. If I went to this particular person and they were not treated well, irrespective, yeah. maybe fault may be yours. And and now coming to the your point that how do you actually keep it? You need to, and that's what we actually try to practice is because of the veracity of uh, product categories that we are in. Uh, yeah. The moment of delight. People previously used to talk about it's my zero moment after that I bought this product perfectly fine. But your moment of delight is an end to end journey where I bought this product, who installed this product, and who is giving the service to me. Right. All the so everything. Are everything put together, and that is what the delight that actually comes to customer. If any of the matrices goes down, even a small interaction with your call center. Yeah. The response even on it's equally your, important. That spoils the entire effort, and that's what you don't want to do it. And that's why you need to measure different different satisfaction indexes of your consumer so that at least that indexes are always high. That that's how. Right. I, I understand. Nitin sir, you are seeing from the other side, right? You have the inside view. Uh, you are seeing everybody, all your customers make these decisions. So, in your opinion, from your experience, how can a leader like determine and communicate the right value uh, to the other leaders of the organization to make this buying decision simple and getting everybody on the same page? Well, I think um, you know, if I look at it, um, customer experience, uh, which was uh, erstwhile. a cmo responsibility has become an important metric for the entire cxo community you know you yeah. think of it from a cio perspective what has he done to improve the customer experience nps is not just a ceo metric right it's a yeah. organization wide metric and yeah. i'll give you a few reasons why this is more important now than it was before right so you see the disruptions that have been caused across the world right even before pandemic you had uh, large enterprises you know which were like legacy 30 years of uh, business and everything being challenged by very new nimble startup companies you know that gave consumers a simple way to solve their problems meet their daily yeah. needs satisfy financial requirements you know the so yeah. so the whole aspect of customer experience became very important and then you know you had uh, in last year like some of uh, my colleagues on the panel talked about right uh, february 2020 you're thinking about the next 10 years and now you suddenly have pandemic and everything is here and now and for the people right yeah. people were people were thinking about what's going to happen today right yeah. and and um, as as the pandemic came across a lot of organizations which were kind of ready um, yeah. you know saw their existing customers demand more out of the yeah. customer experience right uh, if i am yeah. a customer of yours i am going through these challenges i expect you to empathize with me and give me more and then there was a yeah. huge amount of new customers that were never on the digital platform came across yeah. right uh, yeah. experience also meant that you are rewarding the journey i talked about the example of uh, you know fitbit you have fitbit. nike and you have so many more right you have you know yeah. sports brands talking about that and it required not only the cmo but the head of sales service the head of marketing the head of you know security customer support human resource finance and even the board to come together right so yeah. the concept here right uh, is about one it's the responsibility of all the cxo within the organization it's not about selling it to you but how can you yeah. come on board the second yeah. is that the process to you know create customer experience is not about creating a website or a or a marketing activity it's about digitization of processes it's yeah. about total employee motivation imagine you try to create a customer experience but your employees are not motivated to do it how do you create a customer experience right so yeah. these are certain yeah. things that uh, i believe are um, quite important uh, organizations who have uh, you know stakeholders in each of these areas need to come together and define it as a common goal and rather than selling to each other you know make this objective that they need to achieve it together got it and these is now uh, i mean all of you know this that data and metrics is very easily available right we are living in the age of analytics so what kind of metrics and data do you guys look at like samit sir what do you look at while making these digital transformation decisions are there any specific metrics uh look when you want to make the decision i guess it is really about uh, you know where your organization wants to go and i'm giving you the live live example of what we as a company are going through uh, yeah. so there is a, a defined time period let's say we say it's a three year project and at the end of three years you know you want to have yeah. you have some 
revenue milestones, you have some financial milestones, you have some customer matrices, maybe brand matrices. Yeah. But yeah. I think in terms of uh, really, if you want to split, and I would personally like to see that the way we want to drive this project in our organization is really break up, break this up into small, small goals and not really yeah. look at one matrix and one goal. So during the execution of the project, I think, uh, you know, goals to begin with uh, should be, you know, you know, what is the kind of, you know, what is your consumer behavior like? How is the consumer behaving when he's consuming your product and services to the digital world? Yeah. Map some consumer journeys. If you've got it right, then I think that is the first goal you need to take that off. I think the okay. second is what is the choice of technology? You know, uh, if you've got that right, then you need to take that off. The third is, you know, what is the right architecture? What is the right platform? You know, uh, you know, uh, you know. I think that's the third milestone. So I'm not really talking about metrics, but I'm really metrics. talking about milestones, goals, which you need to tick off. Rather than yeah. have one grand plan that, you know, at the end of three years, you know, from this digital transformation, I expect my revenue market share to go up by, you know, 10 basis points and my profitability to go up by X percentages. Yeah. And, you know, I could go on, you know, for example, you know, after that, you know, uh, so, so I think I would really say, instead of focusing on metrics during the digital transformation process, I think you yeah. should look at specific goals and right. small goals, step-by-step -step journeys, tick off each of them and move to the next one. Understood. But this is what we're talking about this digital transformation. This is the big phrase that has come up in the last two years for a lot of companies, right? Even I, I'll give you an example as comedians also, right? Everybody has made this digital transformation to, into doing Zoom shows this and that. Some, some brands are doing it half-heartedly, right? In the pandemic, some sites saying, look, do it. But I think in the last two years, we've realized that this is a must and we have to, we have to do it full. They say half-heartedly, we can't do it, right? So as brands who have kind of invested half-heartedly into it, who now have realized the need and have to move into it properly, what do you suggest? What is the right move um, in, this, in this time? Well, uh, you know, Sapan, let me start by saying that uh, no one can become successful through half-hearted attempts. Exactly. exactly. You know, you know. Then it's like when organizations and leaders within the, the that organization make a decision to change. It needs to be done with flawless execution. It yeah. you know you need to have uh, measurable KPIs. The change needs to be around the entire organization. Um, and you know, as we go ahead and measure success, as we go ahead and measure those KPIs, we need to have yeah. the ability to continuously make you know adjustments to the plan. I can say yeah. with confidence and also know it for a fact that organizations in every industry are, uh, uh, you know, today facing unprecedented disruptions and, uh, you know, the traditional approach won't, you know, won't work. It is, it is no it longer work. relevant, right? Yeah. It, if you look at it in today's environment, uh, consumers yeah. are demanding differentiated services, right? They're, they're saying, yeah. do, do you know me and do you empathize with me? Brands need to actually go ahead and yeah. really, you look at uh, personalization, right? Um, we know, and I don't want to name the OTT player, but one of the OTT players uh, today has a huge amount of personalization at scale, right? So you kind yeah. of get get uh, stuck with that OTT player, or rather, you love to see content from there because they're, you know, showing you what you want to see, and this is based on a lot of data and insights that they bring in, right? Pradeep sir is messaging his team right now as you speak about OTT. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and you know, it's uh, it's it's critical for all of us in the industry, including. Yeah. You know yeah. the you know marketing heads, the CIOs, the CDOs. Yeah. That yeah. we need to have a cutting edge customer experience solution that can deliver yeah. incredible engagements in this environment, right? I, yeah. I think uh, that's the that that's the baseline. There are so yeah. many examples across you know different industries that have been able to achieve success based on this. So I think yeah. uh, from my perspective, half hearted, don't even attempt it. It's better where you are exactly. because you you'll yeah. waste a lot of money and effort. And not come with yeah. outcomes but if you really want to do something uh yeah. do smaller as as you know we put it across earlier that right? do smaller things take yeah. you know steps into digitization and digital transformation and and be yeah. successful at it and then the then the entire engagement of these smaller steps yeah. will become yeah. much more than the you know than you than the sum of all got it i think you, you i think you're pretty much saying what summit sir also said you are, you guys agree on that point that way correct this way I mean, so we had uh, the team shared one very interesting research with us that said that uh, in the last one year, there was like a considerable growth in the sales of kitchen and electronic appliances. Uh, that was something interesting. One, have you seen that? And how have you incorporated that into your strategy for the next one year or five year plans for the company? See, Sivan, I think that's a very good insight uh, that was brought in terms of what has happened is immunization is something that is happening globally. 
if you actually match the india trends versus the global trends in the consumer appliances and durable space the premiumization is actually happening people are upgrading to premium products that they really want to have so for example there are two ways it is actually happening so i have one particular air purifier at my place why not i can have second or the third purifier can i actually upgrade the brand that i was actually investing in that particular and that's that's a global phenomenon and that is happening yeah. in entire uh, country to bring it what has happened right. is very very specific to india there's a lot of reverse migration that has happened in last one one and a half years most of the yeah. people actually moved from their particular base city where they're actually working to their home cities and what yeah. has happened i have a certain lifestyle that i'm actually doing in delhi or bombay or uh, bangalore now i'm taking it back to my own place let's say that's i'm going yeah. to but i want to change yeah. particular product because that is my life has actually been running so what is happening you are also right. trying to build this particular product to build into the yeah. entire what is happening most of the places you won't have the distribution obviously distribution is a very costly affair you just can't have yeah. Yeah. stocks everywhere so online has actually played that entire particular need gap solution for everything and that yeah. is to stay because the demand is continuously coming so for example let's say i used to have a basic water purifier in my place my parents used to do it now i really want to have something which is an ro plus uv plus us everything put together yeah. that is what yeah. i used to do so that's right migration has actually changed big time so from top 20 cities that are actually getting maximum sales now that are increased to 60 and 65 cities and that trend wow. will continue to at the hypothesis which market says today next yeah. year it will go to around 160 to 65 cities so you can actually yeah. see contributions of much more higher across the entire industry understood so from your point of view what are the metrics that you look at to consider the customer experience level when these these movements are happening so it's a, it's a very very tough uh, question to be very uh, i'll tell you sapan because in our industry it is you have so many stakeholders it is not about only one stakeholder or okay it's a customer you also have specifiers you also have electrician you also have architect yeah. and and frankly speaking it is it is better said than done you can actually make or satisfy one person at one point of time rather than making all of them at the same time so there are right. different matrices there are different matrices for example project has a different matrix consumer has different matrix but one thing that is has there should not be a negative connotation from the brand or the experience that they have i think that the bottom line that we actually follow we may not be able to fulfill everything that you want whether whatever customer right. but the, the bigger idea is there should not be a negative connotation it should the, not be a negative that that's a larger impact and that's a larger challenge going forward i understood ankur do you have any more insights from the audience that you can share with us yes absolutely i have got a very interesting uh, input oh. on that who should be responsible for budgeting a cx investment and uh, uh, pradeep you kind of responsible oh, oh, oh. <laughs> for the cxos and i'd definitely come to samit on this one because you know it's it's like he won and he lost so <laughs> samit samit people either love you or hate you we don't know which one it is <laughs> so pradeep but i start with you uh, uh, what is your opinion you know on this uh, you know who is should be responsible for the cx budgeting in an organization uh i think what uh, we need to do is replace e with f and f with e i think we are just about there okay. uh, you know awesome. so you have zero on the first just give it up and he's like have zero percent views on that <laughs> because uh, see the ceo like i said is a facilitator at the end of the day if the person who's bringing in the technology whether it is the back end technology driving the infrastructure or the product design and the tech that goes into the ultimate interface that the consumer has with your offering right. whether it's a service offering or a digital offering or a physical product the marketing guys actually have the best listening posts because they are listening to consumers all the time and not only are they listening to consumers they are also benchmarking your offering against what's there as competitive offering from other players in the market for you to be able to stand yeah. out so i think the collective combination of the finance guy who's making sure that you are not going over the top and are conscious of the cost and hence value delivery to the consumer the marketer who's listening uh, to what the consumer ask is and is designing and creating the product around it and the technology guys who are enveloping or bundling the whole thing and putting it together they need to have an equal role and i mean a 40 40 30 or a 35 35 35 doesn't really make a difference the ceo just needs to feel proud that he has a team that is really being able to do all of the work so that he can go out in press conferences and panels like this and take all the credit <laughs> that's a that's a good Samit, one samit sir what do you have to say about this 46% responsibility that has been given to you versus the zero so now you know six is a winner i am wearing the cto hat but you know i think i just wanted to you know uh, give my two bits on the situation so i think essentially it has to be a combination of the 
uh, of the CMO, CSO, you know, the guy who's, you know, uh, you know, handling the customer, uh, who's really responsible for the first card outward feed from the customer. So he's the guy who's actually demanding the solution in terms of this is the way my consumer experience, uh, you know, process needs to look, look like, you know, how will I handle my moments of truth, etc. And I think the CTO essentially is providing the solution. So there is a demand side and there is a supply side. So the CTO right. essentially has this, is, is essentially fulfilling or supplying to the demand which the CMO or the CSO makes. And right. like I said very rightly, I think the CFO really is the is the goalkeeper or the gatekeeper to ensure that ultimately you are operating, you are not operating with unlimited resources and you are operating under some financial constraints. So he yeah. really does the, uh, you know, the gatekeeping to ensure that you are not going overboard on some investments where you have really no visibility on what- He's the father of the family. Yeah, the father of the family is the CEO. That is without a shame. <laughs> <laughs> There's the mother of the family who gets the money from the law firm. Yeah, you can see the mother of the family. So he's really yeah. the guy who's doing the balancing act between, yeah. you know, the IT guy because the IT, the, the CTO will come and, you know, probably propose the most expensive solution which <laughs> will meet the demand of the CMO the most. So the yeah. CFO really does the balancing act. So I would, you yeah. know, be a little more liberal and give the CFO a few, a few percentage points and not zero. <laughs> So, so, sir, do you, do you agree? I actually have a very interesting question from our audience and I would like to oh, okay. quickly take this to Nitin actually. Uh, one okay. of the audience members asked, uh, what are the metrics that uh, you know one can use for assessing the efficacy of the CX programs? And since you deal right. with you know, very different kind of customers, I think uh, you can definitely you know, put in some insight over here. No, absolutely. I think um, I, I have a fantastic panel and they can certainly chime in. But uh, from my perspective, I think, uh, um, you know, the customer engagement uh, metric around, uh, you know, they were they able to find products and services uh, easily. Uh, and they, they were looking at uh, things around uh, how frictionless it was for consumers to buy those products and services. That's an important metric. So um, not to go too much on the uh, on a very esoteric marketing language language but like the conversion rates that we get right you're sending out so many communications uh, how often uh, what's the kind of engagement that you do uh, what channels have been you know very uh, uh, you know very productive uh, during that engagement uh, and you're getting conversions around that that's very important from a, from a cx perspective um, yeah. i think the nps also brings in some level of uh, you know customer experience for, and uh, customer journey uh, you know efficacy uh, indicators and uh, I would say that uh, there's another metric called uh, you know uh, recency frequency and monetary which actually gives you the metrics around how how good your customer experience uh, investments or you know uh, solutions are when you're dealing with the organization so there's a uh, you know if I go to the depth of it there are hundreds of KPIs that you could actually bring forth and we provide capability and technology around measuring each one of them right uh, and then you go ahead and really look at what's important at a top level and measure that. So, for example, for, you know, from a, a CEO's perspective, you won't worry about those 100 KPIs, like what's my, uh, you know, click to cash kind of, a, uh, you know, metric or what's the conversion rate I'm getting. But from a CMO perspective, it becomes very important because they're designing messages and they're sending it out and they're seeing that whether the audiences or their consumers are liking it or not. But you know, from yeah. let's say from a CEO's perspective, it would be more around the fact that, uh, you know, how many customers did we retain? Uh, how many new subscriptions did we bring forth? And who are our top most profitable segments, right? So it's different metric for different perspectives, but uh, yes, it's important for us to measure. Awesome. Uh, one good. more question, Sapan, I found very interesting and definitely want to kind of get a, a bite from Amit on this one. Uh, and this is a very interesting one. So uh, someone has asked any clue how to differentiate between genuine feedback uh, from the customer versus doctored feedback, because, you know, uh, there are tools, but ultimately, how do you differentiate between uh, the feedback and, you know, factor that voice of customer into your CX uh, strategy? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a joint and a co-creation uncle that actually works. It is not about you are, can you get hundred percent right? No, definitely. The answer is that you can't go that. But sometimes you have to take it as a pinch of salt. What exactly is the genuine uh, thing? I'll tell you from my experience, if you if you ask me as a before marketer, I always think I'm a customer first. So if I've been in this particular shoes, what would be my situation? And I'll tell you one practical example which happened uh, during the first pandemic that somebody had literally have a huge problem 
and all the family members were actually down with covid and their water purifier was not working uh two days the entire part of the service guy saying no no sir it, it is they are trying to have the service they are just trying to pull it because it's a service period their amc is getting over they want to do it but genuinely when somebody spoke to them said it was a genuinely a problem and water is something i can't order somebody because at that point of the time the situation was very tough nobody will deliver water to you even a bottle of water will not be delivered yeah. if you actually see on a face of it obviously the mc was 3 days before the actual expiry if you say you're busy or actually just trying to utilize it but on the actual context it is it actually makes a huge difference but one thing which i see which is not a very matrix or any number that come but i think for a brand and a brand custodian kindness and empathy either as a customer or a consumer it actually Lovely. works wonders that's an investment that actually works wonders you have to filter that. if you are able to filter that then obviously your 90% of the problems will solve still there will be 10 to 15% places where you actually get fooled because customer is trying to but it doesn't matter in a larger piece right. i'm also trying to satisfy that customer also irrespective we have food yeah. or whatever he has done that is how the yeah. beauty of the entire pieces awesome i think empathy is definitely the winner when it comes to uh, and customer for sure over to you sapan i i uh, wanted to kind of bring in some important question from the audience for sure thank you so much very very interesting insights we are almost towards the end of the panel i have one question which i want to throw open to the panel again which is that uh, all of you belong to different industries but um, you're all on the same page about how you want to make this digital transformation for the businesses that you run so according to you how do different industries see the uh, customer experience value like different industries have, must be having different points of so what do you think is the difference in that pradeep sir do you want to start actually i'll take a shot at it because i think a lot of our experiences around consumer experiences or customer experiences really evolved from what is on offer today right the current range of products and services and how do you do marginal or incremental improvements to that to make sure that your service or product delivery continues to be consistent people continue to pay good value for it i think what gets lost somewhere in all of this is how to create the organization future ready how to create products and services that the consumers may demand 5 years from now 10 years from now and with the rapid evolution of technology that becomes yeah. extremely important and somebody in the organization has to own that uh, sort of yeah. baton and run with it i'm taking right. this clue from one of the word clouds that uh, ankur had put up earlier which had that, that word crypto right now the oh, person who had put up that uh, word crypto <laughs> would have actually yeah. thought about why does you know and uh, when you hear crypto you think cryptocurrency but if i was to briefly quickly cover it the whole concept of cryptocurrency the whole concept yeah. of how technologies such as blockchain how such yeah. uh, technologies such as tokenizations of products and services in the tokenized ecosystems creating yeah. new paradigms of commerce outside yeah. the traditional currency banking ecosystems will create yeah. completely new avenues of product creation product delivery product yeah. consumption product monetization for businesses that are you know living in the digital universe is 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 a rapidly evolving area and i think yeah. if you have your ears to the ground if your cx processes are astute enough to figure out the discernible changes in the trends that are happening in your consumers mindset that is where you will be able to do and which is why i love you know the the marketing uh, brain that amit is and i said that you know he is a rockstar marketer i mean the whole concept of empathy the whole concept yeah. of picking up those anecdotal evidences and anecdotal incidents to draw longer yeah. inferences out of that which may then create itself a substrata of strategy that will allow you to be relevant to your customers on a sustainable basis and and that's really what this game is all about so uh, i i'll say that yes looking forward to the future is extremely important even as you serve your current base yeah amit sir as pradeep said empathy very important but how else do you think different industries see the value in this yeah i would suggest uh, i think different industry and different functions should create their own particular matrices and one okay. see one particular matrices when somebody has decided which i mentioned should not be the matrices so please create what is your consumer experience index what is your consumer yeah. interaction index what is your consumer involvement index because end of the day yeah. for a marketer for a brand that is what it matters to me i may be doing very well in terms of all the financial parameters i may be doing very well yeah. in but for me and that is how i think for every industry it requires very yeah. customized set of matrices that you need to define and why you need to yeah. define then the improvement can happen Yeah. How I see, I think it is much more better in today's context. Understood. Samit sir, any insight here from your side? 
So, you know, I have a little bit of a different take on this, Apan, because I think, uh, okay. uh, you know, and I've this is from my experience of working across multiple industries and in, uh, product and services. And I think essentially what every organization is trying to give a consumer is what he has a need or what we are trying to create as a need. And that need yeah. essentially gets fulfilled through a process. And in every process, the customer has what you call the six, seven moments of truth. You know, when yeah. he's actually sampling your content in terms of, you know, your catalog of products, you know, how is he going through that experience? Second yeah. is when he's making when he's making a purchase, you know, what is the kind of experience he's going through? When he's yeah. making payment, when the product is getting delivered to you. And finally, the reverse logistics, when he doesn't like a project product and he wants to return it to you. And yeah. lastly, yeah. when he's giving a feedback. So, you know, every, yeah. uh, you know, product or every, uh, you know, service which you're essentially giving, maybe service skips a few steps here, has these yeah. moments of truth where the customer is experiencing you. And if you can yeah. really measure and have matrices to uh, monitor how you are faring, whether whether through a you know poll or whatever, uh, you know yeah. across these moments of truth is uh, yeah. you know, how every industry should really uh, you know gauge or measure their customer experience. So I, I really Understood. think it is essentially how every organization moments their customer interaction and experience on, across these moments of truth, which I think is standard Understood. across uh, you know most organizations. Every industry. Nitin yeah. sir, do you agree with this? So you're on mute, sir. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Um, uh, you know, I think <clears throat> I completely agree. And I would say that, um, you know, there's a lot of learning, I, you know, I had uh, from the panel, panel today, because uh, if I look at, um, you know, what all, what all did we discuss? We said that, uh, you know, uh, companies have to be innovative and, um, you know, to deliver best uh, customer experience, uh, uh, they need to build uh, digital agility into the operations. I think if yeah. you, you know, if you, if you uh, talked about the fact that it, it's not just about, uh, you know, uh, one area, but everybody needs to come together. And, uh, you know, that has to be the uh, core strategy of customer experience, right? The second right. part we talked about was uh, around uh, embedding uh, data and analytics across the enterprise. So, you know, you mentioned that uh, getting data is very easy. Frankly, I will yeah. tell you that uh, uh, more than 70% of the organizations getting data is not easy. And it's, uh, oh. you know, it, it, it's, it's uh, very, it, it, companies that have achieved that are, are uh, very different in terms of their customer experience. And uh, I don't think it's very difficult, but we know you've got to set your mind to it. You've got to set your yeah. sight on that. We want to yeah. bring data together. The, the yeah. other part was that, uh, you know, this came out of uh, crypto security. You know, there's a lot of emphasis that companies need to bring on safeguarding customer data. And, yeah. you know, which is even which is even more relevant and more important because we are becoming more and more digital. You look at the entire e-commerce space and how you can sell all the identification information that you're putting across so many multiple sites yeah. and all that. So customer data yeah. becomes uh, very important. And I love the fact uh, when I talked about, you know, staying close to customers, right? You know, it's yeah. not about, um, you know, uh, that uh, you're getting all this feedback and what do you do? You need to be close to the customer, empathize with it. And even more important now, because you know, you're not, you don't have physical proximity to your customers now. Imagine yeah. you can't reach to your customer. You have to be close to your customer. They need to feel that empathy. So, so these are certain things that I believe are very important for organizations that want to, you know, epitomize uh, digital engagement and customer experience. Understood. I have uh, one last question to the panel, which is um, again, as we started asking, how do you even know that you know your customer experience needs uh, improvement? Uh, in a similar way, you can't you know trust your customers to tell you if they're not seeing value. Like most of them will just leave and switch to a different product. Uh, unless you're a stand-up comedian, they'll come and give you galis. But other than that, you know they'll they'll not even fill online surveys these days. They'll just go to a competitor. Or if they've had a very bad experience, you know they will come and on social media they will try to complain about it. But so how do you and your team find out what is bothering your customers? Is there a, is there a market research? How do you guys evaluate that? Anybody, Amit Sir, would you like to begin with this? There are many uh, research, uh, Sapan, your brand health research, your product health research, which can tell you that what exactly to it, uh, if you really want to get into a deep dive of any particular category or any particular. But the larger piece is, which is, what is your engagement level with your customer? irrespective of whatever yeah. your customer is. If that is going yeah. down, it's a big problem for the organization. And that, yeah. I think you should always keep and you should always see what is the engagement level and why it is actually dipping, why it is actually shifting from engagement level. Because why right. some people having a dialogue? People are not happy with you and say, yes, I'm not happy with you. This is, this is not working with you. 
But if your yeah. customer is just keeping cold and is not getting interacting with you, see there are three things which are very important when you say in terms of what you need to do. First is your engagement. Second is your interaction. And third is how are you actually involving into the entire discussion? Are you trying to just because I'm a brand, I will not have to solve you. This is take it or leave it. If you're yeah. involving your customer, understanding he also understands the perspective that beyond a point you can't do it. Uh, certain things to look at. Yeah. If you do this this yeah. entire particular framework, it works wonders for it. Yeah. Understood. What about uh, what about Pradeep sir? What do you have to say in this? How do you understand what the customers' complaints are? See, there are multiple listening posts uh, available today, and you know I think these listening posts can be active or this can be you know passive. I mean, social media obviously is a great example, and people are pretty vocal these days uh, in terms yeah. of expressing their sentiments, even when they don't fully expect to be heard by the brand. They want to make yeah. their expressions and their voice heard. So that's obviously yeah. a, a good primary research. I think some of the traditional methodologies of focus group discussions or uh, you know commissioning primary or secondary research, etc., still continue to be in vogue and it has its uh, utility as well. But I'm saying okay. that from a uh, from a uh, you know, uh, from a quality perspective, I think sometimes the quantity of feedback that you're getting and quantity of insights that you're getting on the consumers helps you refine the qualitative aspect of it. And that is where digital tools come in extremely handy. So if you have right. a wide number of listening posts that is capturing all sentiments uh, uh, in, in large, vast amounts of databases and you have data sciences teams that are invested in discerning trends uh, and have algorithms algorithms that discern inferences out of the huge amounts of data that you're getting, I think you will have a sharply defined marketing program. It obviously depends, uh, varies across product categories and the kind of consumers that you're dealing with. For somebody like us, where every consumer interaction with every aspect of entertainment content, depending on time yeah. of day, place, which part of the globe is he coming in from, uh, yeah. demographic segmentation, age, gender, yeah. Everything is a yeah. queue, right? So we are literally- I think analytics for you would be, yeah, so, you would have a lot of analytics. It's a All lifeblood. I mean, I mean, we, 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 our heart doesn't function, our brain doesn't function if we don't have that lifeblood of information. <laughs> and that's how uh, that's how uh, we evolve as a body. And I think the more yeah. you exercise your muscles, that's how you know you grow as a human. So it essentially yeah. means that the more you experiment with your program and see the response to every change that you do in either your product or your marketing campaign, that's how you yeah. that's how you get the insights uh, to do more. And and I think it's an iterative cycle. And most importantly, it's a fun cycle. I mean, it's it's it's, it's as marketers, it's awesome these days to be a marketer because oh. you have so much information. I mean, you know, marketers like uh, Amit and me who go back almost two decades plus and, you know, I don't want to reveal our ages here. I think when we started <laughs> off, we were, we were hamstrung. You already agreed with your collection of books and uh, cassettes. I think we revealed the entire panel. I didn't say cassettes, although I have them, but I didn't just, I didn't just stay silent on that. <laughs> no, but the fact is, no, we didn't have that, this quantum of information earlier. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, now it's just simply amazing and, and Thank yeah. God for technology. Thank God for, you know, the Shantanu Narayans and Krishnas and Indra mm. Nui's and uh, Sundar Pichai's and uh, Satya Nadella's of the world. Singles. <laughs> and Nitin Singles of the world. And Nitin Singles of the world. And really give us the technology. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Of course. Uh, you're very, I, I love how passionate you are about data. I, I love seeing people who are passionate about data. What about Samit? Uh, do, you, do you also look at data that actively or in your industry is not as? Yeah, sir. So, uh, we, of course, like all industries, we look at data, we look at customer uh, feedback, the voice of the customer, etc. And like uh, you know, other panelists said that uh, thankfully because of the digital transformation, there is a lot of uh, information on customer behavior, you know, yeah. customer feedback. Especially now with the addition of social media, there is there is enough information across industries. Yeah. I think what I've realized is you know I think you said something someone at the starting to say that you know some customers silently go away. And, you know, yeah. there's an old thing which we used to say, at least in my earlier organization in UR, that, you know, for every customer who actually complains, there are nine customers who silently go away without complaining, right? Yeah. So that's cute. And I think uh, with this whole plethora of information about customers and their feedback, their behavior, their engagement levels that we have, I think one yeah. thing which, uh, you know, we need to take very seriously is how we actually handle customer feedback. Because yeah. more often than not, you have tons of information, you have data analytics, and you finally, you know, uh, come down to some nine, 10 specific feedbacks at a point of time on how customer is perceiving you. But I've yeah. seen more often than not organizations really struggle, struggled in times of terms of, you know, kind of resolving that feedback and doing something meaningful and permanent in nature so that it doesn't recur. So I think as I much as information is available, I think the second leg of this journey is really how you take customer feedback seriously, internalize it, 
and eventually yeah. do something about it instead of just saying Got that you know, i know what the Got customer it. thinks but i and you yeah. know hence i think amit mentioned i think empathy is what plays a very critical role in terms yeah. of actually close looping the customer feedback yeah customer feedback ankur i hope you have taken the customer feedback for this panel well so far yeah yeah everything yeah. is okay no we have uh, made sure that we are able to bring in the customer and our audience wise into uh, the panel that's the whole idea yeah. of switching the hats yeah. absolutely yeah 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 thank you so much my one last question to nitin sir before we uh, drive off we've been discussing customer and customer feedback uh, nitin sir according to you what drives the customers and employees both to be loyal to the brand and how do we uh, make this customer experience better in the long term yeah i think uh, it's a it's a it's a you know it's a question and an answer that i can go on forever but uh, uh, to put it uh, shortly uh on the on the customer side i did talk about um, you know uh, that we reward journey we reward you know where we get aligned to it closer to them uh its personalization at scale all those things that i you know mentioned very critical i think on the employee yeah. side sometimes a lot of organizations uh, forget about uh, employee and i i, I follow uh, a concept called uh, you know tomo which is total motivation so it's about okay. you know uh, how do you bring you know processes that make your employees empowered i think uh, a few of my uh, you know panel members talked about uh, empowering employees empowering people within the organization and you know we've got to make every employee, employee the custodian of the brand so uh, customers you know engagement customer service empathy uh, brand value their perceived value of uh, what they're paying for the services that they're getting on the employee side you know the same level of experience to employees right uh, having principles and policies uh, which are basically helping them become the you know the amplifiers of the brand amplifiers of service and you can see this uh, uh, in in uh, you know in some of the industries right uh, some have talked about uh, his experience in obroys i think the you know employee motivation in some of the hospitality actually creates yeah. a kind of experience for the brand right so yeah uh, my perspective is that uh, customer experience is across the organization uh, yeah. at, being being a person who sells a lot of products and solutions i would say that uh, you know it is important to go ahead and buy the right product and the right set of partners to implement it but what is more important is managing the chains across the entire organization in processes which deliver these expected outcomes faster right that's what's important yeah understood i learned a new phrase from tomo i heard of four yeah. this is the first time i learned it. yeah I, exactly so so you know sapan uh, tomo is the new uh, employee experience mantra amazing that's a, on that lovely note uh, thank you so much everyone for joining us um, we all i think uh, shared some great insights and we learned from all of you uh, i hope you guys had a good time uh to the audience who joined us thank you so much uh and thank you for responding on menti especially that guy who wrote wife uh we really appreciate <laughs> it <laughs> and everybody else thank you for joining us i hope you stay safe i hope your companies grow your digital transformation is great and your customers never leave you uh thank you so much on behalf of adobe ajil dx and um, tt money this is apan varma thank you so much pradeep sir thank you so much samit sir anuj sir nitin and ankur thank you for being a great co-host and handling all the tech for this Um, hope to see you guys again the next time.